When it comes to building a slider in Webflow, essentially you have two options. You can either use a third-party JavaScript library like Swiper.js or Splide, or you can go complain about it on Twitter. Well, today I'll introduce you to a third option, which is to roll your own from scratch using vanilla JavaScript and a little bit of GSAP. We'll build this full screen slider. I have next and previous buttons here, and we'll add a little bit of a parallax effect to make something simple and show you how you can do this in JavaScript yourself. Hey there, Web Bay. To get started in Webflow, we have a collection list here. The list element has a class name of slider and the item element has a class name of slide. And now in there, I have the slide image and that is hooked up to the slide images within my collection. So what we wanna do first is we want our slide to take up, let's say a hundred dynamic viewport heights. And we're using DVH here to make sure that things look okay on mobile too, because we want those buttons to come up right above that pesky URL bar in Safari. And then the next thing we're going to do is on our slide image, we're gonna make sure that that takes up 100% of the width of its parent, which in this case is the slide, and 100% of the height. So now we can see it's stretching to the height. And if we just take this fit and push this over to cover, then we know that we'll get our image to fill the entire boundary of our slide element, which is again, 100 dynamic viewport height. If I scroll down, we can see that we have all of our images here and we're gonna go ahead and make a slideshow out of this. And the way we're gonna do that is by putting everything on top of each other. And then we use GSAP to animate stuff out 100% and in 100% from the other side. So let's get started with that. So I'll select my slide class up here. This is the collection item right here. And we're going to apply a position of absolute to this. And when I do that, immediately everything's gonna stack on top of each other. And I'm also gonna select this icon for full down here, which is inset zero, making sure that our slide hits the top, the right, the left, and the bottom, all at the edges of our browser viewport there. And you'll notice that when I toggled from static to absolute, that the one filling up the viewport there actually changed. So if I come back to static here, we see this is the first element in the collection, depending on how I've ordered it. But when I change to absolute, again, these are all stacking, but the last one to show is actually the last one in our collection. So let's take this back to static and scroll all the way to the bottom. And we see this interplanetary kind of starburst thing going here is the last element. And then when we make this position absolute, it now shows on top. And this makes sense because the way the browser stacking context work is that the last element, so the way these are going to stack up are going to be like slide, 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 slide in the element inspector if I went ahead and actually inspected our canvas, we can see that we have our list here. This is our role equals to list. And then we have our item, item, item. And this item right here is going to have an image inside it, which is that nice swirl that I have. Again, the first image. And then if I come down here, this is the last image. So now we would expect this to be our starburst. So just a little tip on what position absolute with a collection list is doing to your actual items here. Now, the next thing I wanna do is drop in a div to take care of our overlay, which is where we're gonna put our previous and next buttons. So I'm just gonna paste this in here and you can see we have overlay. This has a height set to 100 dynamic viewport height. So it's gonna match our slider here. And then it's also got some flex properties, bringing everything down here to the bottom right. And it's also got position fixed with that inset to cover as well. So it's gonna cover over everything with that Z index of nine, but it also has pointer events set to none such that I can't click anything. Or when I do, I actually get the slide image click and not the overlay element itself since it is overlaying everything. However, we do wanna make sure that our buttons are clickable. You can see now when I'm clicking, since I put pointer events none on the overlay, we can't click those buttons. But if I select them here in Navigator, what I will do is I will just set pointer events to auto on these button elements only. And then I'll provide an is previous class for our previous button. And I'll grab our next button and provide the is next combo class on there. So let's pop into the page settings here. And here inside the head tag, I'm already loading the code that is hosted locally so that when I write some JavaScript in VS code, this will run on my published site. So let's open up some style tags just like this. And then I wanna target the class of slide. So this is gonna get all the elements with the class name of slide and we'll make sure that their opacity is set to zero. And then we'll also create a combo class on the slide element and we'll call it is current. And for this one, we will set the opacity to be one and we'll make that important just so it overrides anything else. And we'll also set the pointer events to auto on that active slide or the current slide as we'll call it. So let's go ahead and save and publish and then see what we have. On our published site, we have nothing. Now, remember we added opacity zero to all of our slides. So let's go ahead and make sure that that is true. So we're selecting and we're actually getting the image of the last item in the slider list here. And we can see if we go ahead and inspect our CSS right here, that yes, its opacity is set to zero. Now what happens if I add that is current combo class, just like this, so I add is current and now I can see this slide. And if I were to just remove that from here in the DOM and let's say put it on the third one here, so is current and hit enter, then we see, now we see this one. 
So we can kind of already get a sense of how our slider is going to work. Now let's take a look at the code. I'm going to start by importing the GSAP library from the Skypack CDN. This is going to give us access to the GSAP object where we can call methods to create tweens and animations for our slider. I also have two constant variables up here, the transition duration to be 0.8 seconds and a parallax amount to be 30. You'll see how these come into play later as we define our animations. Now at the bottom here, I have a class called slideshow and this is how we're going to create our slide. In the constructor here, we're going to initialize our DOM and set everything up. In the navigate function here, we're gonna define what happens and how we track which slide is active and which one is going to be next or previous. And then in animate here, we're going to animate everything to make it all work. And so we can see the constructor takes in a slider here. So it's gonna to have to get past a reference to that element on the DOM. Navigate takes a direction, which will be a number for either positive one or negative one. And then animate will take in the current slide, the upcoming slide and the direction. All right, quick interjection. If you see that class keyword and you don't know what's going on and you see constructors and you're talking about that and you don't understand this code, then you got to check out my Patreon. I have a full course on JavaScript in there and the fifth module is called Objects and Classes and is all about how JavaScript objects and classes work and how we can build them ourselves and what's going on under the hood. So you're gonna understand these things fully. Now, what's really cool about my course is that every module comes with a Webflow project. For module five, we will be building this little flashcards app, which pulls questions and answers from the CMS and uses JavaScript to program how we can make a simple little flashcard app complete with these cool little CSS animations so that you get to put your learning into practice. Anyways, that's enough for me. Let's get back to building full screen sliders. So let's go ahead and get started with the constructor. So I'm gonna start by initializing the DOM elements. I'm gonna set a variable this.slider equal to the slider element, passed in up here as a parameter. I'm going to create a variable this.slides and we're gonna create an array from the node list that is returned by query selector all on the slide element. So this is gonna return us however many items are in that collection list. I think in this case it's six. So we'll get six elements in our node list and then we'll create an array from that. Next, we'll create a variable called this.slides inner. And what we're going to do is we're going to map over all of our slides. And for each item, we're going to call query selector on the image, which is just the direct child of that image and store that as slides inner here, because we're gonna to wanna to animate those images too. And that's how we're gonna get that parallax effect. And then we need some tracker variables. So we're gonna create a variable this.current equal to zero. This.slides total is equal to this.slides.length and this.animating is equal to false. Now we'll go ahead and set our initial state. We're gonna get the current slide, which is set to zero up here, and we're going to add the class is current to that. So if I was to go ahead and create a slider right now, we could say const slider equals to document.querySelector the class of slider. And then we can say const slideshow is equal to a new slideshow and we'll pass in the reference to slider there. We can see that the first element is actually showing because we applied that class of is current to it. So let's go ahead and inspect it and we see right here is current was applied to our very first list item. However, our buttons still aren't working. So let's get working on the actual slideshow functionality now. The very first thing we want to do is actually exit if we're already in an animation. So we don't want our button to do anything in that case. So we'll check our variable this.animating. Is it true? If it is, we'll just have our function return false. So it's using this return keyword here. So the function is over and nothing else is going to happen. However, if it's not animating, then we want to show the next slide, right? So we'll go ahead and set this.animating is equal to true. And then we'll save our current slide index by setting a variable previous equal to this.current. And we'll go ahead and update our current slide index based on the direction. So if index equals to one, then that is the next direction. Or if index equals to negative one, that is the other direction. We'll go ahead and update that this.current. And the main thing we need to check is should we wrap or not? So in this statement here, we're checking if this.current is less than slides.total minus one. If it is, then we just increment this.current. Otherwise, we wrap it to this.current equal to zero. This statement here is just if we're going the other way, are we on the first slide and need to wrap to the last slide? And now that we've handled our indexing, we can go ahead and call our animate function. And our animate function will send previous, which is going to map to current down here. This.current will then be passed to our upcoming slide and the direction will be passed to the direction down here. Okay, so in the animate function here, let's start by getting a variable current slide and setting it equal to the slide at the index of current. We'll get our current inner and we'll get slides inner and grab the current index of that one as well. And then we'll also get our upcoming slide calling this.slides of the upcoming index. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, we're creating our GSAP timeline and we'll specify some options for our timeline here. We're gonna set some defaults. We wanna set our duration to be the transition duration and we wanna set our ease to be power4.inout. 
You can change this to whatever you want. We're going to define an on start and an on complete function. I'm actually not gonna fill these out until after we do our tweening because we're gonna animate those properties to what we want them to be and then we'll return them or start them at where we need them to be. So let's go ahead. First, we're gonna animate the current slide. This is the one that's animating. We're gonna animate it to an X percent of negative direction times 100. If the user presses the next button, then we wanna give the impression that the whole slideshow is actually sliding to the left. So everything's sliding back or previous, which is why we have that negative in front of direction here. And then 100% to make sure that the whole thing goes. We're gonna animate the current inner element too, which is that image, to an X percent of direction times the parallax amount. This is gonna provide a little bit of an offset with the image to make a really cool looking animated effect. And we're gonna give it this caret less than sign so that it starts happening at the same time that this tween happens. And our final tween here will be a from to animation on the upcoming slide. Now from to takes both a start and an end state. So the start state is going to be X percent equal to direction times 100. So again, if the direction is hitting the next button, then we wanna come from the right to the left. So start it over on the right there at 100%. And we're going to animate it to 0%, which is the from here. And then we pass the character to this one so that it starts at the same time as this tween, which is starting at the same time as this tween. So everything happens all at once. Now let's go ahead and define our on start and on complete parameters. So on start, I want the upcoming slide to get the is current class. So we're gonna have both is current on the slide that's going away and the slide that's coming in because we want both of those to have opacity equal to 100%. And then we're also going to use GSAP to set the upcoming slide Z index to one. This is making sure that none of our slides end up under the ones that are coming in should always show up on top. Now for on complete, we're going to remove the is current class from our current slide. We're going to use gsap.set on the current slide to set x% percent to zero, current inner to reset x% percent to zero, and we're going to set the upcoming slide to z index auto, which you know we set it to one here. This is so that when the next slide comes in, it can show up on top of the upcoming slide, or what in that case would be the current slide. And then lastly, we'll set this dot is animating to false, and this completes our big animation step here. We'll finish up our slideshow by query selecting the class of slider again. We'll instantiate a new slideshow by passing it. And we'll also set up our previous and next arrows. We'll use query selector on is previous and is next. And we'll add event listeners to those. We'll look for the click event. We'll run the slideshow.navigate function. For previous, we'll pass negative one as the parameter. And for next, we'll pass positive one. Now we can save and see if we got everything working. Now we have our slideshow here. When I click next, we're getting the next slide to animate in from that plus 100% to 0% and the previous slide to go from 0% to negative 100% and we can keep going that way. I'm gonna go back now, back now. This is the first slide we're gonna wrap. This is the last slide. We can wrap from the last slide to the first. And just like that, congratulations. We never have to whine about the slider element in Twitter again. Although honestly, you'll probably find me doing that anyways.